Hi, you guys. I wanted to do a quick update. Jennifer here from California. Hello, welcome to my channel. I had VSG surgery, which is vertical sleeve gastrectomy surgery, which is a weight loss surgery, on January of 2017. Today is August 26th, I believe, of 2019. I was at 261 pounds at my highest weight ever. The lowest weight I ever saw since surgery was 162 pounds. I would actually kind of plateaued and stabilized at 170 pounds. But a month ago, at the end of June, I went on a fabulous two-week vacation to one week in Vegas with my family and then one week staying with my parents in the Tahoe area. And man, it was amazing, but I gained like seven or eight pounds. It was, I think it was like seven and a half pounds, something like that. I couldn't believe I gained so much weight. And I think that, you know, it was the buffets and the kind of drinking some alcohol and just indulging and just having fun. But some of it was probably water weight, you know, that kind of stuff. But I was freaked out a little bit. That, that's a lot of weight to gain in that short amount of time. So I went on a low carb diet and I lost all the weight. It, it's all gone. I am now back today, 170 pounds. So it's gone. And I am just, I'm kind of proud of myself for being able to, to stick to the plan, lose the weight pretty quickly. And so low carb for me, I guess it's just the way to go. As uh, being two and a half years post-op, I don't know. I think that we all, if you are post-op um, quite a bit, you kind of realize that at first, eating low calorie, the weight just falls off, but then you get to a point where your body's like, hey, I guess we're supposed to only eat a thousand calories a day. So this is, it becomes like normal. And so at, you get to a point where a thousand calories a day or even 1200 calories a day or 800 calories a day, if you eat that consistently, then you just stabilize. You don't really lose weight. You don't gain weight. You just kind of stay. So I had to do kind of bump it up and, uh, I did not drop my calories, but I did drop the, the carbs and it worked. So very happy about that. One thing I want to talk to you guys about is today I had a doctor's appointment that I wanted to share some information with you guys. Uh, so I am 170 pounds. I, uh, they did my height today and I am officially five feet, 3.54 inches. So I am five, three and a half basically. So I'm not very tall and 170 pounds, which puts me at a BMI, which I don't know is off the top of my head. It's only because it's written on this little sheet. It puts me at a BMI of 30. Well, I lost 90 pounds and I just started with a new doctor because my old doctor, um, my endocrinologist has retired. So I started with a new gal today, which she was amazing. But I got a diagnosis of obesity. Seriously, out of all the stuff I have going on with my body and I got a diagnosis of obesity. I wasn't too happy about that, but there is more. So I got a lot of junk with my body. I've got endometriosis, I've got Graves disease, which is a, an overactive thyroid. And then I had a thyroidectomy, which you can't really see this lighting isn't very good. I'm sorry about that. But um, I had my thyroid removed, which caused me to have no thyroid level and so I have to replace all my thyroid with fake thyroid and so I'm on a thyroid replacement therapy so I am I tend to be very low thyroid so I basically have the symptoms of say Hashimoto's without having Hashimoto's I just have the symptoms of low thyroid because it's very hard for my body to absorb thyroid replacement and so I'm kind of dealing with that but I've got severe endometriosis which caused me to have to get a total hysterectomy. Now a total hysterectomy, in case you don't know, because not everybody would know this, that basically means everything, like ovaries, uterus, cervix, like the whole, the whole shebang, total hysterectomy. Well, the thing is that I couldn't go on estrogen replacement. I was on it for a while and they realized that, um, that it, estrogen feeds endometriosis and so why would you put someone with endometriosis on estrogen replacement? So I'm having a really severe um, issue with endometriosis, had to have a major, 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 major surgery and they'd use like the, the Da Vinci machine to scrape it off of my kidney and my ureter, ureters, that tube that goes from your bladder to your kidney. 
Thank God for the Da Vinci machine because they saved my kidney and they saved my ureter. Um, but no estrogen or low estrogen for, for women can cause osteoporosis. Well, turns out in my last video, I've talked about that when you're under 45, you cannot officially have a diagnosis of osteoporosis. You get bone, low bone density. Well, my birthday was on Saturday. So happy birthday to me. I'm 45. But now after being at the doctor today, I have an official diagnosis of osteoporosis, which sucks. Also the fact that it's severe osteoporosis, it's not even like osteopenia or, or little osteoporosis. It's severe. It's like bad, bad. Even my new doctor, she said, your numbers are really bad. Ugh, I did not like hearing that. I did not like hearing that. But she's gonna, she's considering putting me on a, this regimen of this new medication that's like a daily injection for two years. So I'm gonna get a DEXA scan, a, a second DEXA scan um, in the next couple weeks, hopefully, so I could find out if I've had any improvement since my last DEXA. So we'll see about that. But you know, generally speaking, yes, I'm telling you, it sucks to be sick. And it sucks when it's not a visual sickness. So people don't always understand. Like I have a lot of like back aches and neck aches and soreness. And I got my aches and pains with thyroid disease and low energy. And I got all this like, bleh, like we all have this, this, this junk that comes with having these dang diagnoses. And it's a little tricky when it's not visible to other people. And so a lot of it, I feel I kind of have to kind of keep it on the inside and not really, I try not to complain a lot, but right now I'm sort of venting. So I apologize if it, feel, if it feels like I'm doing a bunch of complaining. This is like me, this is kind of like my outlet to sometimes express like what's going on on the inside. Cause like my daily life, I really, I mean, I could complain all day long if I really wanted to, but nobody likes a complainer. So I try to just keep it in, but it's more also understanding that, man, there has been so many benefits from having weight loss surgery. I would not, um, I, I wouldn't go back and do it and do it and not do it. I mean, weight loss surgery is, is a great thing. It's a wonderful tool, uh, but it doesn't fix it all. I definitely feel like I look better. I right this moment after being low carb for a month, I'm feeling a lot better than I had been. I had been feeling pretty bad. Let me just say a lot of aches and pains, a lot of inflammation, eating low carb for me really reduces the inflammation. So I feel actually physically pretty good, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't prevent everything. We've got our genetics. We've got, we've had the damage that was, has been done to our bodies from being obese in the past. And you know, I think we could just live the best life that we can. So I just encourage you, if you've had the surgery, if you're thinking about it, understand that it might not fix it all. It might not fix relationships that, you know, you hope we want to lose weight. So you have a better relationship with your spouse or you're, you know, have more friends or, you know, do this or what it will do is give you the body to be able to go on that hike that you wanted to go on, or maybe ride the bike or, uh, you know, go down the water slide or wear the swimming suit in public. And when you go, we went on this amazing vacation to Vegas. I wore a bathing suit out in public. Those are like the, the milestones. Like, dang, there's no way I would have done that in the past. And, you know, if you are still 260 pounds or 300 pounds or 400 pounds, please, if you have the, 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 the self-confidence to do that, all the power to you and please live your best life. For me, I, it held me back. It just mentally, I just did, I just did, uh, it was, it was rough. It was rough. And it, but it was more, I just didn't feel good. I had my, my body ached so badly and I just didn't feel good. And so I sure the heck didn't want to go swimming when I felt that, that bad. But now that I've lost 90 pounds, I've kept it off for two and a half years. I know I'm facing a lot of stuff in my future. So I have just resigned and just, dedicated to living the best life I can right now. This, I'm 45 years old. I pray that I got another 45 years ahead of me and I don't want to regret not taking advantage of this body that I got right now. I haven't had any, any fractures. I haven't had any um, big traumas to my body as an, as an adult. And so 
lots of prayer and, you know, willing to try new things and I'm um, just doing everything I can. So if I could be of any assistance, if you have any questions about weight loss surgery, whether it's VSG or gastric bypass, my daughter Amanda it has been extraordinarily successful with gastric bypass. And I want to do another video with her, but our, our schedules are very conflicting. She works nights, I work days. It, it's kind of hard to get the two of us together, but I'm still working on that. If you have any questions that you want to ask the two of us, please put them down below. If you have any questions about thyroid disease, Graves' disease, uh, bariatric surgery, endometriosis, osteoporosis, ask away. I, I've got a lot of info in my brain. But anyway, thanks for, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe. You know, that, that's awesome too. But anyway, I hope you have a great week, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.